Wow. Um, the balls you would have thought um, with, with Bruce Pearl in the house, with people questioning them and what they um, and how they haven't met expectations just did not come out and play very well on uh, Saturday. And I thought we're very fortunate that Auburn can't shoot either. And they ultimately, uh, Tennessee was able to get the win, but it, it was it was not pretty and it was pretty brutal is what it was. Yeah, and so the first question is, are we sure Ron Slay's coming Wednesday? Is he not going to duck us? <laughs> yeah, he'll be here. He'll be here. I can promise you that. Um, yeah, that was awful. And I don't want to hear any – you know, I saw uh, a I, – I'm not going to name names, but I saw a, a Tennessee beat reporter tweet out how you have to eke out tough wins like this and how that's somehow a good sign. No, it's not. No, it's not. This wasn't Tennessee eking out a tough win. This was both teams playing horrendous, and Tennessee was just lucky that Auburn played a little bit worse than they did in that game. I mean, I get Tennessee's a good defensive team, but you one team shoots two of twenty-one. Oh, excuse me. One team shoots two of twenty-one from three, and the other shoots three of twenty-seven. That's bad basketball. And also, Tennessee was ten of seventeen from the free throw line, fifty-eight percent. This is one of those type of college basketball games. By the way, this is two top 25 teams. This is one of those type of college basketball games that it always makes me laugh when people say they prefer watching college basketball to the NBA. This is why I don't. I, this is why I prefer the NBA. Because college basketball allows for teams to win playing that level of patheticness in a game. Two top 25 teams. These are supposed to be two of the more elite teams in the sport. And they look like that. I mean, that's just embarrassing, honestly. And... What we're seeing now is if Santi Vescovi is not red hot, is not shooting well, Tennessee got no answer from three. Tennessee has no other, nobody else that can consistently shoot. Josiah Jordan James was the one player who you could be proud of how he played. He had a double-double, but he was one of seven from three. And again, this is just, it was an embarrassing game. And I, it's funny that we're talking about this, about a top 25 win. But for people who wonder why there's not a lot of energy behind this Tennessee basketball team, that's why. It's obvious that this team has some glaring offensive issues. Yeah, and if if they want to feed it into the post as 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 much as they want to, I'm I'm fine with that. You you and I may differ on that a little bit, but the post player has to be able to kick it out for an open three at some point. And if you want to go in and out, I, I get that. But I just felt like Tennessee coming down the stretch couldn't get surefire buckets. And if you're a post team that's built on defense, what should you do in the last three, four minutes of the game? You should be able to get stops. You should be able and they and they did that. It was largely Auburn, I thought, missing opportunities. But you also should be able to get those tough twos. Listen, if you want to build your team like that, I get it. Uh, but but get the tough twos. Tennessee had an opportunity to close the door on Auburn late and they didn't. And I just felt like for, for this point in the season, it's February. That felt like a December game to me, Caleb. That felt like a team that didn't know itself. And and I understand in December if you lose games and and it's not the conference schedule and you don't look great because you're still finding yourself with the way rosters turn over. I get that. But this felt like a December game on February the 4th. And that to me – makes absolutely no sense. How, and I understand injuries are a part of it. I get that. But also, to, to, to not to pile on, but coming off just a terrible um, showing at Florida and, and not have something put together to play better at home. I mean, this was set up. I don't remember the spread. You probably do. Do you remember it off the top of your head? I do not, actually. Um, well, I mean, it was it was it was fairly significant if, if you want to Google that real quick. But I don't understand why um, Tennessee didn't come out and and play better. Both their players and have a, a better sort of approach. Um, it just uh, I I don't know. I and and I ask you this question. Uh, I do want to get to the the message board, so we're we're not we're not forgetting you. John said we stunk just a tad bit less. Uh, the Kentucky game was bad, too, Travis said. Um, Travis said they did get a quality win, and they did, but they just aren't a good shooting team, and that's ultimately what it is. So um, when when you look at this basketball team, what are realistic expectations? And things could change. I've seen them go 
up and down in February. But right now, what are realistic expectations? You said it's not a Final Four-worthy team, despite being number two in the nation last week. So I know kind of where you stand on that. But what's best-case scenario if you're a Tennessee fan? Is it Elite Eight? Is it Sweet 16? What is it? Yeah, I, I think best, best, best case scenario is Elite Eight. I think defensive teams like this that aren't good shooting teams or that are prone to these bad offensive performances are capable of getting all the way to the Elite Eight. I don't think they're capable of getting to the Final Four. I don't think you can win four games like this in the NCAA tournament. And to address it, I don't mind. I'm, I guess I should clarify where I come from. I don't mind inside out basketball, but the thing, you know, if Kansas plays inside out basketball, Bill Self, that's what he lives and dies by. Roy Williams, at it, when he was winning national championships in North Carolina, always had a go-to big man underneath the basket. My, my thing with inside-out basketball is inside-out basketball, there is the out part. <laughs> there, is, there is the part where guys got to hit open shots. This isn't inside-out basketball. It's inside, keep it inside, and hope that uh, a guy's able to make a play. And oftentimes, not. it's not inside-out basketball. I think it's designed to be that way, but it's not right now, Caleb. Yeah, it's not at all. And the key to inside out basketball is you got to have good shooters. I mean, you know, you got to have somebody that can stretch the floor. And no, I mean, again, all you have is Santi Vescovi. And I don't know what type of slump he's in right now, but you can't get out to Josiah Jordan James. You don't know what type of game he's going to have because he'll either go one of seven or five of 10 from three. Uh, if that's every other game, well, you got to, that's a problem in March Madness. Kick it out to Zakai Ziegler. Who is sitting here worried, like, oh my gosh, Zakai's open for a three? Who's thinking that when you kick it uh, out to him? Nobody. I think there's concern whether he can get the ball in bounds or not. That that was another aspect late in the game that you know just was in stark contrast when you think back to Bruce Pearl and his inbounds plays, and they were so genius. That's why I always said that. I don't know. That's it's a, it's a cool, but it, that that just. Do not be able to get the ball in in bounds at one point when Kai Ziegler is running back and forth. I thought it was very emblematic of the problems this this team has. And that is, Caleb, they just don't seem to really know each other right now. John's saying I would much rather hit a slump now as opposed to hitting it in March. I agree, but I think what you're you're talking about is you're talking about a chug along type of offense that is going to face some really potent offenses in March Madness, and I, I, I don't know that that can get fixed. Uh, Caleb, can it get fixed um, in the short term, and what would you do to fix it if you're Rick Barnes? I think your best case if you're Rick Barnes is to go small for the rest of the way. I think put Josiah Jordan James at the four, um, put uh, Santi, so go Zakai, Josiah, Santi, and I would say Tyreek Key, or I'm sorry, Julian Phillips. Um, and then, yeah, Tyreek Key, and then have Julian Phillips or Olivier Nakamwa uh, underneath the basket at the five. I think go small, turn up the tempo a little bit, play a little fast, a little faster. I think Tennessee has some athleticism with their length that a lot of teams can't compete with. And so I think their best case is to try to turn up the tempo a lot more, play a little more chaotic, play um, – Circa Bruce Pearl 2005 2006, when he brought in that 2 2 1 press that nobody in the SEC was ready for at the time. <laughs> um, that was still, I think, I still maintain that 05 06 Tennessee basketball team, his first year, that was the most fun team I ever watched. Um, and I think that's their best, best chance to get something going because, quite honestly, at this point, you're not going to find another shooter. I've said you need two to three reliable elite shooters to go far in the NCAA tournament. Tennessee's got one in Sandy Vescovi, and he's slumping right now. So if he's slumping, they don't have another guy. And I don't – you can't find that in the middle of the season. Tyreek, he's a scorer, not really a shooter. Julian Phillips can exert his will underneath the basket, but he sure as heck is not playing like a five-star right now. I was reading reports when he committed last year that he was the he was the new Kevin Durant for Rick Barnes. Looks nothing like Kevin Durant right now. Uh, can't stretch the floor the way KD can. So I, I don't think they really have any – they can't solve the one big problem that comes to get you in March. So their best chance is to really turn up and play at a frenetic pace because they have the athletes to do that. Well, I just think it's incredibly important. And again, hit that thumbs up button, the like button. We greatly appreciate it. I just think it's incredibly important that Tennessee is able to get at least a two seed. 
um, because you start getting into the matchups and one versus 16, you know, you're going to win a uh, two versus 15 with 95% chance you're going to win. I mean, it does happen, but then you, you start getting into three, four seed where you're playing a 14 or a 13. Then suddenly you're, you're getting realistically that you could get upset and not to mention the second round uh, is even more challenging the further you fall. So um, you know, t- Tennessee is in a precarious position right now, and th- they really got to find their way really quickly. They are, and you're right, they do. And they, like we've talked about, Rick Barnes has been to the second weekend once the last 15 years, and that was that 2018-2019 team, which for people that are questioning, I'm sorry, that 2018-2019 team with Grant Williams, they would blow this team out of the water. They would absolutely obliterate this team. And- no, no. I asked the question earlier. You said they could get to the Elite Eight. That surprised me a little bit. I, I, I said that's best-case scenario. I don't think they're going scenario. that far. Okay. I think best-case scenario is Sweet 16. I, I think this is looking like a one-weekend team, to be real honest with you. But the other thing that plays in their favor, Caleb, that we have to remember, is it seems like we say this often, but it's very true now. That It's just wide, wide open uh, college basketball is right now. I mean, if you – I don't know how you pick a, a top team that is uh, significantly better than all the others. I don't see that team right now. Do you? No, I don't. And one of the biggest reasons for that, quite honestly, is because of how the top two teams, Purdue and Tennessee, I got no faith in either of them getting out of the Sweet 16, um, quite honestly. I don't think Purdue is going that far because Purdue, everything I'm criticizing about Tennessee, Purdue plays to an extreme level. Purdue is the um, – I mean – I, I don't want to mention his name because it, it creates strong feelings either way, but everything wrong with Quanzo Martin's system you see in Purdue with their obsession with defense, and it gets the best of them every time in the tournament. I think the best they ever did was an Elite Eight run when they beat Tennessee a few years ago. And I just – I firmly believe that style doesn't win national championships. You know, you look at the Gene Keady coaching tree, which Quanzo Martin came from, and I think Purdue's coaches Matt Painter comes from that too. Gene Keady uh, – Stress defense. That's where Jamie Dixon came from when he was at Pitt. Nobody from that coaching tree ever goes to the Final Four. Nobody. Because no. you, it's such a grind to focus on defense all year. March comes, you're mentally drained, and you don't have any scoring options. 